When someone talks about Jojo, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? Paul Narav, put that cake away, man. Poses. Jojo is well known for its wide array of poses, but why did Araki decide to put these poses into Jojo in the first place? Well, Araki is a big fan of high fashion. He has taken a lot of inspirations from people such as Antonio Lopez to designers from fashion houses like Gucci. He also bases a lot of his art on fashion magazines such as Vogue. That's why you see volume covers with extremely unusual poses like this. Even though the characters are doing a carbon copy pose, Araki still manages to twist it into something of his own, and it really gives Jojo a really unique style compared to a lot of other mangas. Whenever Araki draws his manga, he's constantly flipping through fashion magazines or art books. There are a lot of videos about Araki making art, and he's always got something to draw inspirations from. He also draws a lot of inspiration from Greek statues and Renaissance art. You can clearly see this in characters like Giorno, who himself has his looks based upon Michelangelo's David. The presence of the Renaissance influence is very much present in most of Golden Wind, actually. This doesn't come as a surprise, though, as most of the part is entirely based in Italy. Two huge examples of Araki taking inspirations from Michelangelo are Dying Slaves and Pieta. Another reason why Araki utilizes poses so much is because Jojo is always overly dramatic. A good way to portray that is by using insane poses. The premise of battles in Jojo is to always outsmart the enemy. And what better way to do that than going on a monologue explaining how you won the fight in full detail while posing. A good example of a scene made more dramatic by posing is when Polnareff swears his revenge on Centerfold. <laughs> The popularity of Jojo poses has also lately exploded thanks to social media and apps like TikTok. Even though I despise TikTok, I do enjoy seeing the Jojo community being creative and having fun. The more people introduced to Jojo, the better. I just feel like I want to share this amazing manga and anime with anyone who is willing to listen. Did you know that once upon a time there existed a Jojo post school? Apparently it started way back in 2003. It was started by Japanese fans of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. The first meetups were organized by the fanfiction community by the name of Bunjay Junkie Paradise. Word about these events quickly spread like wildfire after a couple of meetups. Later events had to be shut down due to the sheer amount of people turning up. Reportedly the number of people was up in the hundreds. Even though the official events had to be stopped in 2004 because of this, that didn't stop the fans from splitting up and making smaller events all around Japan. Hirohiko Araki even picked up on this phenomenon, and he invited the original staff of the Bunji Jonki Paradise to attend a party where they performed some Jojo poses together with Araki. The word Jojo pose was also officially added into the Encyclopedia of Contemporary Words back in 2005. Hirohiko Araki has also had his fair share of influence into the fashion world. In 2011, he collaborated with the Italian fashion brand Gucci during their 90-year anniversary, and also the women's fashion magazine named Spur. Araki made a one-shot comic featuring Rohan Kishiba, and the name of the one-shot is Rohan Kishiba Goes to Gucci. The exhibition event featured artwork of the 16 pages from the manga one-shot, as well as other Gucci products on display. There was also a life-size Rohan Kishiba statue displayed at the exhibition. In 2012, Araki once again collaborated with Gucci and made a one-shot manga, but this time focused on Jolene. This one shot was called Jolene Fly High with Gucci. Over 70 Gucci stores worldwide displayed Araki's artwork on the front window of their stores. Araki has also had several art exhibitions, including one in Allure, so he isn't a stranger to these kinds of things. So that should cover the basics of Jojo poses and fashion. If you have anything interesting to add, feel free to add it to the comments. Also, the Stone Ocean anime comes out in 10 days, and I'm super excited to watch it, and I know you guys are too. So there's going to be a lot of upcoming videos about that, so stay tuned. Alright, have a great day guys, and I'll see you in the next one.